Now, if you live in the UK, you may have been to the petrol station recently and you might have noticed that the good old E5 unleaded petrol that we've been using for years has now been replaced by something called E10. E10 is a new type of petrol that has just been fully rolled out across the whole of the UK. So what exactly is E10 fuel? What's the difference? Is it good or bad for our engines? So in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the new E10 fuel. So what exactly is E10 fuel? E10 is a biofuel made up of regular unleaded mixed with ethanol. Now this ethanol mix is not new to our petrol. The standard unleaded petrol we've been using for years has always contained a small 5% of ethanol. E10, however, much like its name suggests, is now a mixture of 90% regular unleaded and 10% ethanol. That's twice the amount of ethanol than it used to be. So what exactly is ethanol? Ethanol is an alcohol-based fuel produced from fermentation of plants. Things like sugarcane, grains, and their byproducts, basically. Unlike regular unleaded petrol, ethanol fuel is said to be a little bit more environmental friendly. This is because as the plants that become biofuel grow, they reportedly absorb more carbon dioxide than what will be released into the air during the fuel production and the combustion. So in a nutshell, ethanol is added to our petrol with aims to help the environment, which is a good thing. But how much this helps is still under debate. So what does E10 petrol mean for our cars? Well, according to the government, most modern cars will be compatible with E10 fuel. However, if you own an older car, E10 fuel is not recommended. In fact, at the time of filming this video, over 600,000 cars on our roads aren't compatible with E10 fuel. This means that that 600,000 people will now have to fill up with premium fuel or they risk damaging their cars. The problem is, is I would bet that 90% of the people will continue to fill up their cars with E10 fuel with no idea that their car is incompatible. Petrol stations in the government really have done a poor job explaining this to the country. I've spoken to so many people that have no idea that the fuel would even change, let alone what they've been putting into their cars and that they're incompatible. If you're worried about your car and would like to check if it's compatible with E10 fuel, you can use the government online checker at www.gov.uk slash check vehicle E10 petrol. Now, if we go to Mercedes here in the drop down, for example, we can see that E10 is not compatible with first generation direct injection C200 and CLK200 engines from 2002 up to 2005, which is not too old to be honest. So you really do need to be careful and check your car. So what actually happens if you start using E10 fuel in an incompatible car? So your car will still run relatively normal, but it could cause very expensive damage to the seals, plastics and metals in your engine because of the bioethanol's corrosive properties. It also absorbs water from the atmosphere, which can lead to condensation forming in your fuel tank while your car's not being driven. With E10 fuel, if your car's not compatible, it may also start to run a little bit rough, especially on a cold startup, but it should be drivable for the short term. But don't panic if you put E10 in your car and it appears on the list. The advice at the moment is to simply top up with a more suitable fuel. Because the damage is more of a long-term extended use thing, you won't need to drain the fuel out in a panic as if like if you put diesel in a petrol, for example. Just top your tank up with premium fuel once you get around mid-tank and you should be okay. It shouldn't cause too much short-term damage. The important thing is that you top it up and replace it as soon as possible. So what about more modern cars on the E10 government approved list? Well, the government deems these cars to be suitable for E10, but there's a lot of concern regarding if this is good for our engines or not. And if given the choice, I would definitely not put it in any of my cars, especially the wonderful handcrafted AMG engines. There's more bad news too. It's been confirmed that E10 fuel is less efficient than the previous E5 fuel due to it being further diluted by ethanol. People have already been reporting a noticeable difference in their mile per gallon since they switched to E10 fuel. So what should we do? Well, there's only really two options. Many with compatible cars will continue to use the standard pumps and put E10 fuel in their cars. This will result in lesser mile per gallon and potentially some risks of corrosion and damage in the future. The second option would be to use the premium or super unleaded fuel. The downside here is that it's a little bit more pricey than the standard unleaded and this can soon add up over time. However, you will get better efficiency than the E10 and it may save you some expensive repairs later down the line. So I would personally recommend going for the premium unleaded. 
There's also more benefits for using premium fuel, especially if you drive a high performance car. So premium fuels will vary. Sometimes it'll be called super unleaded. Sometimes it might just be called premium unleaded. It really depends on the brand. The thing you really wanna look out for is its octane level. This is also known as its RON. Standard petrol in the UK is 95 RON, while premium will be between 97 and 99. A high octane fuel is harder to ignite because it requires greater compression than lower octane fuels. The higher the octane rating, the less likely the petrol is gonna explode under pressure. High performance engines typically compress fuel more. By using higher octane fuel, you're able to avoid unexpected explosions that might damage your engine. This is why supercars require so much higher octane levels than standard cars, and they have to be filled with premium fuel. Now, there is a lot of marketing buzz around premium fuel, but the manufacturers claim that it also helps remove dirt from our engines, making them run more efficiently. With the E10 changes and the reduced efficiency, now may be the perfect time to jump over to a premium fuel if you've thought about it in the past. So that's everything you need to know about the new E10 fuel. On a positive note, the E10 fuel is believed to be much more environmental friendly, and that is important because we need to protect our planet. But hey guys, this is a car enthusiast channel, so you can imagine what I'm going to say. My personal thoughts after researching heavily into this is that I will not be putting it into any of my performance cars. And you should really consider whether or not you feel comfortable putting this in your car too. So there we have it guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Let's help spread the word and educate people on E10 fuel. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you guys next time.